Okay, I'm gonna say a little bit about my own personal uh, story and my own personal growth. Um, I was definitely born into a problematic family that had a lot of um, a lot of issues, and so I had a rough, very rough childhood, and it set a pattern in my life for the people that I chose to be around. And um, then there was situations that broke that pattern. And um, that's where you know you think like somebody is your enemy. But really once you go through the experience, you see like that was the biggest gift I have ever gotten from anybody. And at the time, you know, um, when you're together with somebody and you think they aren't really worth your time, you don't connect with them, they're just, and you question yourself and then you box yourself in to why you have to be with this person because of this reason, that reason, you know, it comes down to these um, manufactured paradigms, uh, uh, you know, money, uh, the things you own together, all these things that hold us together with people who aren't best for us. But then um, when you when you do that yourself and then that person, when you're trying to hold everything together and that person leaves, then you can villainize that person. But really it can be the biggest gift that anyone's ever given you. And that's what it was for me. It was a, what started me on a very uh, painful, complex, time of growth and realizations about myself and in the realizations about self you have to look at your your dark side and you have to accept your dark side and you um you know because everybody needs to realize that they are a, the bad person to somebody they're just a, you know you you are great to some people and you are the bad person to others that's just the way it is and it's based on their perspective. It has nothing to do with you. It's what they see when they look at you. But so I, um, I went through a lot of hard times in that, but right prior to that was another significant experience um, you know, I had gone through a lot of relationships. I'd gotten married several times and I just kept repeating the same patterns. And you just, you think like, oh, this person's different because of this or that, but it's not about that. There's something different that's involved. For me, when I read the book, um, Gaslighting, I don't remember the whole title, but it was about gaslighting. When I realized I have a part in this, that's not somebody just gaslighting you. You play a part. It's you allow someone else to make the reality, whatever reasons you have, if it's insecurity, it, whatever your own reasons are, you allow that to happen. And, um, and you play a part in it. That was, um, that really woke me up to some things. And, um, but before that, I had, um, I had always wanted to just be an artist. That's all I wanted to do. You know, I took art classes all the time. I um, had gotten my first award when I was in sixth grade. I won a contest of this drawing everybody had to do. And um, I had uh, aunts that were artists and I, that's all I wanted to do. And, um, once I was getting divorced with four kids, uh, I had an art teacher and I was singing, I just want to do art. Where could I do art? Or, and um, he was like, you gotta be realistic. You have to have a job. There's not every artist that's out there making a ton of money. You have to have a real job. And so I thought about my grandma who was a nurse and she raised four kids by herself in the forties or fifties. So, uh, I guess the 40s and 50s and so I started thinking that um, you know that's that's the way to go I had already before been a medical assistant I had managed a internist office um, 
So I, I just thought, you know, that that was the way to go. And so I went back to school, became a nurse and just never, never liked it. It was never fulfilling to me, but I was a workaholic. I work, 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 make money, 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 and spend, spend, spend. Uh, you pull people into you when you are making money who will take advantage of you and um, use you. And um, so, um, you know, it gives you a different insight into people. And it shows you who is a real friend and stuff and um, who, what relationships matter and stuff. So you learn a lot from it. But um, it just, I was never fulfilled. I just, I didn't like it um, being a nurse, but it became my identity. All your friends are nurses. Everything you talk about is medical. It just, it becomes who you are. And um, it's a closed knit little group. Uh, you know, a nursing is, uh, it's a difficult experience to do. And so, yeah, you go, you tend to, uh, uh, the people um, socialize together and stuff. Because they have an understanding of um, what the people are going through and stuff. And so, um, I had to... Um, I, I couldn't find my my niche in the field. I knew I wanted to just do more like social work for mentally ill people. I had seen a while back about MHPs and that's, I was very drawn to that. That's And I had met a nurse who was an MHP and that's what I wanted to do. But there was a lot of medical nursing and hospital nursing and stuff that I had to do. Uh, you know, those weren't, those jobs weren't just for everybody to just run up and get. And then it was right when I got, I was working at the mental health, Spokane Mental Health. And I had just a job, my dream job. I just loved it so much. And um, like a year and a half prior to that, I had gone in to get surgery and I got a, uh, I had to get a hysterectomy. It's supposed to be this quick in and out thing. I had all these medical issues and um, with that whole little system down there. And, um, you know, they said that all had to be taken out. So I was going in to get this surgery. It's supposed to be fast. And there, you know, I just happened to have an intersection with a doctor who was not at a good time in his life, who was doing insurance fraud, uh, was covering up a lot of crimes, was addicted to drugs, and he um, he messed up uh, on my anesthesia, and they had uh, were trying to do a spinal. I think they did six or seven pokes, and uh, because of my scoliosis, they could never get it in, and so all they did was poke holes in my spinal, uh, spinal cord and all the fluid was leaking out and that's an enclosed system that it puts the fluid through your brain it goes it's just a closed system that's circulating these important nutrients for your brain and for your um that whole system with your spine and your nerves and stuff and um so when he did that they didn't ever acknowledge it. They didn't, didn't pass it on in report. They didn't tell um, any nurse, no nurse ever knew. Um, and then I just so happened to keep getting <laughs> nurses that could even barely speak English that were on the wrong floor that were, uh, it was just one story after another. And I kept telling them something's wrong, something's wrong. Nobody listened to me. My headache got worse and worse and worse and worse. I was in extreme amount of pain. They just thought I was a drug addict. Uh, the nurses treated me really poorly because I was a nurse. And um, I was left. Uh, they started trying to figure out what was wrong. I think the fourth day is when they did the first CAT scan. 
and um, then I it was they wouldn't give the results till the next day and that's when the neurologist came in to tell me because uh, they could see that my brain was collapsing so he had to do another scan to, to look at because they could see a bulge of something coming down where in my neck and uh, it turns out it was my brain herniating and because uh, it's a pressurized system and uh, that could have killed me right there uh, so then they went in and saw what was happening to my brain and it was collapsing and so the fifth day they did a blood patch and they go in and they inject you with somebody's blood and um and then the blood has to seal there but then you are supposed to be flat i was never flat i had no fluid i didn't have a fluid in my brain for i think it took six weeks or something before there started being enough fluid in my brain that when I took a step that I didn't feel my brain hit. It was a uh, horrible sensations. It was super painful and it gave me a brain injury. Um, I had, I couldn't, I couldn't, I lost all my memory. I couldn't remember how to do things. I couldn't remember how to drive. I couldn't remember, um, who people were and uh, my kids started, when they were talking to me, they started saying, um, you know, what's wrong with you, mom? Do you have de dementia or something? So I started going back to the doctor saying, you know, something's wrong. I have long-term effects from this situation. And they, no doctors wanted to acknowledge, nobody wanted to be involved. This was huge. Nobody wanted to be involved. And I was told over and over, you know, I'm not going to be involved in this. And um, I had to um my dad kept telling me he, he lives in texas but every time he talked to me he kept telling me you've got to get a lawyer you've got to get a lawyer they you know they did this and um so i did get a lawyer i've been to court once it's, it takes forever anybody who thinks that malpractice is a, or um negligence is a frivolous lawsuit has no idea no idea I mean, the investigation and stuff you have to go through to, you got to find an attorney who will take your case. So many, especially coming to a brain injury, they're just like, oh man, they're just going to pull you in and just say you're a drug addict, you're faking and all that stuff, which that's what they did. But, um, just to get an attorney to take it, they, you go through so much investigation. They go through all your files, everything. And then in court, oh my gosh. The whole courtroom, whoever wants to come, everyone from the hospital can come in and sit and they just expose all your personal stuff. Uh, they humiliate you. Uh, it's very, it's very defeating kind of experience to go through, but it took a long time to even get to that point. Uh, after my brain injury, uh, uh, there became a point when I got that one job and I started having to drive all the time. I'd have to drive around to take my clients places and stuff. And I started realizing I had no idea where I was. I would just have this panic, like where am I? I couldn't even figure out what state I was in. I couldn't remember if I was in Texas, if I was in Southern California, or if I was in Washington. I was just like so confused. You know, I'd be like, okay, this isn't normal. And I had an aunt who was having early dementia. She was dying from Alzheimer's in her 50s. And so I was like, man, maybe it's some hereditary thing. I, have, I mean, there's a lot of people in my family who has autoimmune diseases. And so I thought, you know, maybe that's the thing. So I, um, I uh, went uh, to, I went to the doctor uh, for, I think they had been calling me or something to come in for a physical. And so I, don't remember all of the whole thing but when I got in there that she came in and she said um I need to do some tests on you and I was like um why what are you talking about and she said well my um staff has been saying some really weird things and I think that uh, they've seen some signs of some stuff that I need to test you and I was like okay um because I was coming in to talk to you about I'm I'm getting lost when I'm driving and I have no idea where I'm at so she did a test on me and I failed all the tests. 
And then, um, and I had gone to the doctors and stuff to tell them, but they just kept saying like, oh, well, it's your hormones. Oh, it's this, it's that. Nobody would even do our, you know, um, uh, there was no how. I think the one doctor sent me to a neurologist. I went in and as soon as he found out my, uh, my aunt had Alzheimer's, all he wanted was all of her records. He couldn't even comprehend anything else. He wanted all of her records and just wanted to say I had onset early Alzheimer's. No testing or anything on me. So, um, but at this point when I was driving around and I got all these tests and stuff, and I went in and I had to go and get a, a whole week's worth of tests right to go every day and be tested. And in the end, when they pulled in my family to talk to me, she said that she was turning me in to the, the board because she was uh, um, legally had to and that I couldn't work under the condition that I was in. And I had already knew inside myself, so I wasn't going to fight it because I had already knew inside myself that I had been messing up at work. I was getting patients confused. I had caught myself giving the wrong meds. I was like so stressed out and there was nobody to help. And I was, um, you know, the breadwinner for my family. I was a single mom and um, it was very, very difficult. And um, when I... Uh, she said that and they started t they took my license and then they were putting me under investigation um to see how long it had been going on and if i was aware that i had a brain injury and was working and that i could go under criminal charges so i just i didn't fight them on anything i was like you know i have no idea you know where that can lead uh but in that time that uh to lose your whole identity to lose your um your job and uh your livelihood and that lo um, that led to me losing my house and everything fell apart and um i got married to that person and then i thought you know like yeah i'm doing them a favor or something and um and then they end up breaking up with me so it was in another big thing that happened because i part of the reason i had stayed with them is because i needed that safety net i needed to feel like I, you know i mean i have no idea what's going to happen i need somebody who can drive me you know i'm not even supposed to drive so it was um you know staying with this person because i thought that i needed them so when it was the rug was pulled out from under me that was a huge a uh, wake up call to reality and another giant thing of growth. And that just started, it became a domino effect of things that started happening. And the more insights and the more that I started understanding and it's really taken me on this transformation and this soul journey. And um, so I wanna just keep trying to share my experiences and my perspectives and uh hopefully it can help somebody out there you know like i said before i don't i mean you don't have to tell me that i'm crazy unless you really feel the need to i've heard it enough times but i'm doing this because i feel like that i'm being pushed in this direction and that i need to um it's it's there's a purpose behind it and I don't know what that purpose is. I'm just going to follow my guidance. So, um, I'll do, I'll probably do maybe a couple more today and then I'll start posting these things. Okay. Thanks.